Manassian posted this on Facebook. Let the incel rebellion begin. What's chilling is that the inspiration is Elliot Roger. The Elliot Roger atrocity seems to have inspired copycat killings. More massacres of innocent people in the name of hatred against women. This is an example of the deification or the martyrdom of these mass killers within this community. We have him say over and over again, I want to kill so many fucking people. I mean, it's an outright glorification of mass killing. It's, it's really upsetting. You, you see this content posted over and over and over again, and this normalizes the violence. And you can really see how vulnerable individuals get sucked into this and think that this is a community that I can belong to. I think it's really easy to look at the incel community and say those guys are totally obsessed with sex. Those guys feel entitled to sex. But it's not as simple as that. It's not just that they feel isolated by women, they feel isolated by society in general. Propaganda. It's been used in wars. It's been used to radicalize individuals and manipulate them into joining terrorist organizations. It's been used to convince people that the oppression of some groups of people is justified. That last one that I mentioned describes the relationship that regular people have with incels. There have been some incels who became so sad, angry, and frustrated with their oppression that they used that oppression as motivation to carry out murders. So far there have been seven known cases of that happening. In recent years there have been numerous articles about incels. Writers make sure to mention the most severe of those seven cases in virtually every article that they write about incels. According to the military website Task and Purpose, airmen stationed at Joint Base Andrews in Maryland were briefed about men who are involuntarily celibate. Now, last year there were 561 homicides in Chicago that were mostly carried out by ghetto hood rats. They were mostly carried out by ratchet men who act like Chief Keef and Lil Durk but still manage to get sex from women. You know the type. Yet the Air Force is being briefed on social outcasts who are involuntarily celibate and generally peaceful. What the fuck? Last year there was a Guardian.com article titled, What do incels, fascist, and terrorist have in common? Violent misogyny. And recently there was another article titled, Incel extremism should be treated the same way as religious extremism. Underneath the title of that bullshit, the female author wrote, as the terrifying realities of inceldom are brought to the small screen, we ask digital culture expert Dr. Caitlin Reacher how we stop a community that threatens the lives of women every day. So according to her, inceldom is a community in itself. And according to many normies, inceldom is comparable to Islamic extremism. Now as far as what we know, there have been about 45 deaths caused by violent incels. All of them have been in North America. By late January of 2016, there were already more than 18,000 Iraqi civilians that were killed by ISIS. And that's just in Iraq. They have perpetrated terroristic violence in at least 29 different countries and dozens of their attacks have been in Western nations. The ISIS militant group makes hundreds of millions of dollars per year by selling oil. I'm quite sure that exceeds the income of all incels in North America combined. ISIS aims to create an Islamic state called a caliphate, across Iraq, Syria, and beyond. Is there any proof that all or even most incels in the world are collectively and cohesively trying to take over entire states? If there is, please enlighten me. ISIS is not just small online communities. Unlike incels on forums, ISIS is an organized group with headquarters and trained militants. But show me videos that show large groups of incels training with assault rifles and explosives. ISIS also owns well over 3,000 slaves. Most of them are women and children. 
What in cell do you know of that owns slaves? Telling offensive truths about American society, does not make in cells terrorist. It makes us people who are exercising our First Amendment rights. Just like women are being allowed to do when they brutally disparage men that they find unattractive. Actual terrorism that is motivated by involuntary celibacy is very few and far between. The truth of the matter is that, in cells do not have the unity, audacity, or the financial resources to be anywhere near as much of a terrorist threat as Islamic terrorist groups are. And I think that the normies who write these ridiculous publications, know that. But look at the narratives that women and their simp minions are pushing. A CBC.com article that was posted on January 27, 2019 insinuated that incels were more of a terrorist threat to Canadians than Islamic terrorists. They tried to back that insinuation by saying, Experts interviewed by the Fifth Estate have identified 120 instances of extreme violence in Canada by right-wing groups, including incels, in the past 30 years. This is compared to only seven by Islamist-inspired extremists. So isn't it strange that there was only one terror attack in Canada that was proven to be motivated by involuntary celibacy? Later in the article, it was said that incel is a relatively recent ideology. First of all, it's inceldom, not incel. The abstract noun called inceldom, describes the issue. Incel describes an individual who suffers from that issue. One of the so-called experts that the Fifth Estate interviewed, incorrectly claimed that inceldom is an ideology. As I've explained before, inceldom is a social condition that is caused by superficial bigotry and discrimination. I believe that it's possible that the interviewee knew that prior to making the ignorant claim that he made. But he didn't want other people to know the truth. Some fear-mongering cunt, wrote an article titled, why we should all be alarmed by the incel movement. It was written for a website called scarymommy.com. Now, I find any anti-incel articles on scarymommy.com to be disingenuous. Think about it. In a writing that was on some site called, meforum.org, the female writer stated that, in 2000, the United Nations estimated that there are 5,000 honor killings every year. Later in the writing she said that, most honor killings are not classified as such, are rarely prosecuted, or when prosecuted in the Muslim world, result in relatively light sentences. References are shown at the bottom of the web page. And when looking at the usnewsarticle.com article titled, The 10 Worst Countries for Gender Equality, ranked by perception, it seems like the countries that are the most misogynistic, are generally countries that are majority Muslim. Now. That's ironic considering that ScaryMommy.com appears to be exceedingly accepting of Muslim culture. I say that because ScaryMommy.com is supposedly heavily concerned about misogyny. Concerned enough to feature an incel bashing article in which the writer was clearly attempting to manipulate her readers into fearing men who are incels. Zach Beecham wrote a Vox.com article titled, Incels, A Definition and Investigation into a Dark Internet Corner. In the article, he claimed that the so-called, incel community, numbers in the tens of thousands. While reading through these blue pill propaganda articles, I read about nine known incel murderers. Two of which didn't actually get to kill anyone. Zach Beecham said that incels number in the tens of thousands. The CBC.com article that I mentioned earlier said that, the Fifth Estate shows at least 60,000 people are active in the three main public incel forums online. So based on that, let's say that there are only 60,000 incels on the planet. If nine of us committed murder that was based on resentment against women, that means that a whopping 0.015% of incels have been murderers. Holy shit. We're one hell of a threat aren't we? Also, these incidents happened in a span of over five years. From 2014 to 2016 1,934 women were arrested for murder and non-negligent manslaughter according to FBI.gov stats. Most of their victims were probably female. Yet incels are the problem, right? On Quota.com, a shit starter asked women if they would date an incel. 
Some of the women responded by asking why they would want to date a man who wants to rape and kill them. Implying that all incels are rapists and murderers. Interestingly enough, nearly one in ten women has been raped by an intimate partner in her lifetime. In eight out of ten cases of rape, the victim knew the person who sexually assaulted them. And of course it's very rare for women to personally associate themselves with low-status men that they consider to be ugly. Let alone get into intimate relationships with them. So who are the kind of men that are raping them? It's not the so-called ugly and creepy men that are raping them. It's the chads that they discriminate in favor of, who rape them. The irony. There have been dating site experiments that showed women flirting with men that they knew were violent. They even flirted with one man who was a convicted rapist. Yet I bet that they are some of the same type of bitches who would claim that incels have terrible personalities and are such a threat to their safety. Now of course, the chad profiles in those Tinder experiments, were fake. But the women who flirted didn't know that. So clearly women are very disingenuous. They are full of shit. And I think many of the men who defend women are aware of that, but would never call women out. Logistically speaking, why would they? To do so would mean going against their own self-interest. It would mean rebuking the discrimination that they benefit from. Now of course that would be the morally correct thing to do. But these normie men do not genuinely care about morality. That is one of the reasons that normie men are perhaps just as problematic as the bitches who fuck them. A small amount of incel men committed murder, some threatened to commit murder, now all of a sudden, bitches want to care about and talk about bad personalities and violence. Well, let's talk about bad personalities and violence. Six foot four inch tall NFL linebacker Alden Smith, is currently engaged to some bitch named Shauna McKnight. He proposed to her earlier this year. Alden Smith is also currently on suspension from the NFL until November. Alden Smith was arrested for DUI in Miami Beach, Florida. That was the first time he was arrested. Or at least the first time that the media knows about. But it would not be the last. In 2013 he was arrested again for DUI and marijuana possession after crashing his pickup truck in San Jose, California. Less than a month later Smith was arrested on three felony counts of illegal possession of an assault weapon, stemming from a house party in June 2012 in which Smith was stabbed. Alden Smith has been arrested at least seven times prior to getting engaged to McKnight. On top of being a ghetto hoodlum, Alden Smith currently owes tens of thousands of dollars in child support money. Yet despite all of this, that Shauna McKnight twat said yes to his proposal. And is it any wonder? He has a wonderful personality. That's made evident by his criminal record and lack of responsibility for his son. Normie male, Stephen Paddock, shot and injured hundreds of people October 1, 2017. He killed dozens of the people that he shot. After killing 58 people that night, he killed himself. Stephen Paddock killed more people than all of the known incel murderers combined. Prior to that night he had a girlfriend. It must have been because he had a great personality. Paddock gambled large sums of money, kept child pornography on his computer and took anxiety medication. Sounds like he was a real angel of a guy, doesn't it? Coincidentally, Paddock was six foot two and financially well off. Those two things, couldn't have possibly had anything to do with Paddock having a girlfriend. Even women are far more dangerous than incel men are. Again, there's been less than a dozen known incel murderers in a span of over five years. But every year, hundreds of women commit murder. Many thousands of others get into fights. They assault men and assault other women. In these modern times, American females are extremely violent. I live in Baltimore and I grew up in Baltimore. In most of the cases where people have threatened to do bodily harm to me, it was females who threatened me. About four years ago, I lived in West Baltimore close to Mondawmin Station. Fights frequently broke out around there. The slight majority of the people who I saw committing these violent acts, were females. 
I was surprised about that at the time. Knowing what I know now, I'm no longer surprised about situations like that. But it's the lies that are told and false narratives that are pushed by the general public, that cause people to be oblivious to the truth. So when some of us see and experience things in our personal lives, that contradict what we have been led to believe, it tends to be surprising. Female author Clementine Ford, claimed that women don't murder men who turn them down. Tell that to the family members of Jack Mileski. Claire Welsh murdered him because he rejected her. Look up the creepy female murderer Dr. Shirley Turner and her rejection-motivated crime. Tell Clementine Ford's lie to the family members of Andrea Stranko. She was killed when Morgan Smith committed first-degree murder by shooting her with a shotgun. A fucking shotgun. And for what? Because Smith's ex-boyfriend Daryl Smith, rejected her and chose to be with Stranko instead. Female murderer Camethia Coleman, viciously murdered her ex-boyfriend Brian Spinks by stabbing him over 60 times in his own home. She killed him because he broke up with her. He was killed because of Coleman's inability to handle rejection. Coleman stabbed herself after stabbing Spinks. During the case, she claimed that someone attacked the two of them. She called the police right after stabbing her boyfriend dozens of times. The 911 call, is probably one of the most creepy and disturbing 911 calls in the history of mankind. Street Law Police, what's your emergency? I'm gonna try to kill my boyfriend! That's part of the chilling 911 call Kamethia Coleman made after stabbing her boyfriend, U.S. Air Force Sergeant Brian Spinks. The tape was released today. Coleman was convicted of second-degree murder last week. The stabbing happened in January 2010 at the Quail Creek Apartments in Shreveport. KSLA News 12's Tracy Clemens covered this trial from day one. And he takes us through this 911 call. One of the keys to Kim Coleman's trial and her conviction was the 911 call that you're about to hear right now. Just a warning, it's tough to listen to. Somebody followed me. I was coming to talk to my boyfriend. To ask him if he was okay. Somebody came. Okay. To follow me. Somebody stabbed your boyfriend? Yeah. Okay, where's the guy now? I don't know. Kamethia Coleman's frantic call to 911. Has he been stabbed? Yes, he has. Okay. Brian Spinks had been stabbed more than 60 times, but he managed to get these words out while Coleman was on the phone with 911. Throughout the call, she goes from hysterical. To what prosecutors described as angry. <laughs> A minute and 49 seconds into this call is the last time you hear anything from Spinks. Hello? Prosecutor Dale Cox argues that it's at that point that she slit his throat. He told jurors during closing arguments that whoever slashed Brian Spinks' throat did so in a savage manner with the understanding that that would be the final fatal blow. Coleman broke down in sobs and screams every time this recording was played. When it was played during closing arguments, Spinks' family had to walk out, many of them with tears rolling down their faces. Brian, say something. Say something. But he'd never say another word, and all over what Dale Cox argued was a fatal attraction. He'd reportedly broken up with her through voicemail that morning. But do most women who have been rejected commit murder over it? Of course not. Neither do most incels. Despite the fact that unlike everyone else, we are rejected 100% of the time. So why push the false narrative that being an incel means that you are a part of a violent subculture? Why propagandize? Here's why. Ignorance-based discrimination grants privilege to the people that the ignorance-based discrimination is in favor of. That privilege gives them power. Blue pill people want to hold onto that power and they are willing to do whatever it takes to do so. If the people that are discriminated against, protest against their oppressors, the oppressors view that as a threat to their power. They believe that the oppressed could potentially influence the masses to demand cultural change. Cultural change that would either gradually or not so gradually, 
extinguish the discrimination that makes the oppressors privileged. No more privilege, no more power. Any threat to their power, is a threat that they will diligently try to counter and eventually eradicate. That is the relationship between the blue pill minded beneficiaries of black pill reality, and the victims of black pill reality. The privileged use strategies to combat the perceived threat. Then other privileged regurgitate those fallacious talking points so much that they have created an echo chamber. An echo chamber that consists of victim blaming, deception, and demonization. That is one of their strategies. They are doing that to protect their power. In an article titled, What Happens to Men Who Can't Have Sex, author and propagandist, Peter Eleftherios Baker, stated that guys who can't get women aren't just losers and weirdos anymore. Now they're losers, weirdos, and potential monsters. He has joined women in contributing to the echo chamber because that's what normie men do. That's part of maintaining the power structure that privileged people have. Most of the information about inceldom, is coming from people who are not in cells. These people are the ones who are telling the general public about our lives and our mindsets. Despite the fact that the vast majority of these people haven't lived the kind of lives that we have. But if I was a less knowledgeable in cell who would read these bullshit articles, I would probably be manipulated by what's said in them. I would probably end up feeling like I am mentally unstable. Incels are basically led to believe that we should take personal responsibility for the socially oppressive prejudices that most people harbor against us. I would probably feel like I am to blame for the choices and actions of the normies who negatively affect my life. This would likely either lead me to self-loathing that would eventually make me suicidal. Or it would cause me to speak out against the other victims of inceldom in a pathetic attempt to gain the acceptance of normies and maybe even women. Of course I'd be no more than a simp and at best, a gossip buddy for women. But me taking the so-called, personal responsibility, and even joining them in bashing unattractive men, would never get me into their pants. But because of how brainwashed I would be, I would continue to seek the companionship of women who make fun of me and don't give a fuck about me or men like me. It's similar to battered person syndrome, isn't it? You see the most hurtful thing that victimizers can do to victims, is to manipulate the victims into believing that they are not victims. That is precisely why it is imperative that we know the truth. So that we can't be manipulated. And narratives like that one that was pushed by author Peter Cuck Baker, are not grounded in truth. They are grounded in blue pill lies. Who are the men that are most likely to be potential monsters? Who are the real creepy men? Despite typically being financially stable, men who aren't in cells, are the primary violence threat in America. From the street corner savages and the terrorist, to the serial killers and rapist, men who aren't in cells, kill thousands of people annually and commit at least hundreds of thousands of violent crimes annually. In my city alone, there have been more than 250 murders that have been committed so far this year. Yet it seems as though bitches are far more alarmed by the extremely rare cases where unwanted and socially oppressed incel men, commit acts of violence. But are the stats and dating site experiments just blowing smoke up our asses? Are women genuinely that alarmed by violent and dysfunctional men? Alarmed enough to stay away from them? Well, let's find out. Let's take a look at some violent and dysfunctional men. Let's learn the truth. 31-year-old Court Rail Matthews, was arrested for a shooting at a Fayetteville apartment complex. He was charged with battery in the first degree and a terroristic act. His bond was set at $200,000. As you can see, despite him being a violent man, he still had a woman in his life as well as biological children. But I guess I can see why women like this man. Yet he's violent and ghetto but it could be worst. He could be ugly. After all, as far as bitches are concerned, shooting up an apartment complex isn't anywhere near as bad as being ugly. James Marquez fatally shot Carla Webb in the head during an April 9, 2012 argument in the bedroom of their Spinard apartment. Police said Marquez, had prior domestic violence convictions in Colorado. 
Apparently his prior violence didn't stop her from being his girlfriend. The bullet that he shot into her head, stopped her from being his girlfriend. Because to women, being ugly, is worse than being violently abusive. Travis Graham of Gloucester Township, pleaded guilty to aggravated manslaughter, admitting he caused the death of his then-girlfriend's three-year-old daughter. He struck Charlotte Dawkins with a backhand blow at the top of the stairs of her home in March 2017. He says he hit her with such force that she was spun around and fell down the steps face first. Prior to that, Graham committed a string of five separate armed robberies. He told police the robberies were fueled by his addiction to Xanax, heroin, and other drugs. So not only was he addicted to drugs but he started making a habit out of committing armed robberies. Yet he still had a girlfriend. It's a shame that the three-year-old girl had to pay for her mommy's poor taste in men. Former drug dealer Daniel Moreno Lopez who was convicted of murder in the beating death, dismemberment and incineration of his girlfriend's cousin, killed his previous girlfriend earlier, chopping up and setting her remains on fire in a barbecue grill. He seems like a true gentleman, doesn't he? It's no wonder why he had a girlfriend. I've gone through my life being peaceful and civilized. So I'm an evil person who deserves to be involuntarily celibate. Before Alton Sterling was killed by a police officer in Baton Rouge, Texas, he had amassed an enormous criminal record. His crimes included simple burglary of an inhabited dwelling, felony theft, another simple burglary, aggravated battery, simple criminal damage to property, unauthorized entry of an inhabited dwelling and domestic abuse battery. Also, it's been noted that Sterling was a registered sex offender, and the offense description was listed as carnal knowledge of a juvenile in an online database of sex offenders in Louisiana. Yet in spite of all of his crimes, not only did he get to have sexual interactions with women but a woman actually married him. He died as a married man. To women, men like him, deserve to die as married men. Men who are generally peaceful, deserve to die alone and as virgins, just because we are unattractive. Onto my city, Baltimore. Black guerrilla family gangster Tavon Bulldog White, impregnated four female officers while in prison. He was the citywide commander of the black guerrilla family and allegedly seduced the guards by buying them cars. Personality matters to women so much that this career criminal was able to get pussy while being locked in prison. Not only were those women willing to give him sex but they were willing to have his babies. Jennifer Owens who was one of the female officers that White fucked, loved White so much she decided to get his name tattooed on her neck. In addition to being an imprisoned gangster, White already had a baby mother named Katara Stevinon. Stevinon assaulted one of the female officers that White knocked up. This is what American culture has become and most people are accepting of it. Blue pill people tend to argue against incel victimization by making absurd claims like this. I don't know. He, he was like so pissed off that women weren't into him. And he, he had all these videos and he was like, dude, I'm good looking. I got money. What, 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 why don't women like me? Well, it's women, supreme gentleman. yeah, women pick up on the fact that you're out of your fucking mind for one. <laughs> sure. I guess women used their feminine intuition to detect that Elliot Roger was going to commit murder. Because women are such good judges of character, right? They are such good judges of character that the dumb fuckers often get into relationships with violent men who assault them, assault others, or both. Women are such good judges of character that the dumb fuckers often get into relationships with men who impregnate them yet don't take part in raising their children. But cases where women are victimized by the chads and tyrones that they have sex with, are not entirely negative. If a woman gets fucked up or fucked over by a man that she discriminated in favor of for bigotry-based reasons, it serves her right. Women deserve to lay in the beds that they make. What they don't deserve is sympathy. In her ScaryMommy.com writing, author Eliza Preston said that, the incel movement isn't about sex, it's about power. Power perceived and power desired. It's about misogyny. That is propaganda. 
that is her trying to protect her power and the power of other privileged people. She was doing her part to contribute to the echo chamber. Now was she right about what she said? Of course not. In seldom is not a movement in itself. It is a social condition that is caused by bigotry, prejudice, and discrimination. I'm pretty sure that most of the victims of it, are not looking to gain power over women. We are looking to be treated fairly. We are looking for either the same social acceptance that every other type of person gets or for every other type of person to be treated just as badly as we are. Either way, we are looking for, equality. After all, equality is what the SJW types want, right? It's not about misogyny. It's about holding women and normie men, accountable for how their choices and actions negatively affect our lives. It's about spreading awareness so that the victims of inseldom do not internalize the victim blaming and shaming tactics that normies use against us. So here are the facts that incels need to be aware of. Fact. Incels are not a terrorist group. Incels are not a group at all. Incels are the victims of the social condition called inseldom. Involuntary celibacy or inseldom simply means being unable to get sex. Or being unable to get sex and a romantic partner in the case of incels that are looking for relationships. That is the only inherent meaning to being an incel. Despite the fact that the effects of being an incel tend to go beyond that. Fact. The vast majority of incels in North America, have not murdered anyone. Fact. The normie men that women are accepting of, are far more of a violence threat to women than incel men are. Fact. Women are far more of a violence threat to both women and men, than incel men are. Fact. Based on the simple logic of cause and effect, incels correctly blame women for our involuntary celibacy. Incel men are involuntarily celibate because women refuse to have sex with us. Therefore, women are in fact the cause of involuntary celibacy among heterosexual men. The effect is that we justifiably blame women for our status as being involuntarily celibate. Lastly, if you are a person who is involuntarily celibate, then you are an incel. Regardless of whether or not you choose to identify as one. Do not be scared to acknowledge that. It does not mean that you are violent, it does not mean that you are a loser, it does not mean that you suffer from mental health problems. It means that you are a perpetual victim of bigotry, prejudice, and discrimination. Know that your status as being a victim is not a complex or mentality. It is a circumstance. When some incel individuals tell the truth about that circumstance, women, and normie men, use fear-mongering propaganda to vilify us. Well if publicly pointing out the causes of inceldom and reprimanding the people who cause it, makes me a villain, then I'll go ahead and be a villain. An incel villain.